Um, thank you so much for uh, uh, for being invited, and uh, it's also a pleasure to, uh, to to be here together with my uh, mentor and a, and a great inspiration, uh, Johan. Uh, so we have this outdated saying in Norway, as you as the Norwegians know, at least this jumping after Virkula. But I, I heard an, the African uh, analog to that uh, a few years ago was going into jail after Mandela. So, uh, <laughs> um, okay, um, my, uh, um, let me see, this is, uh, yeah, um, my background is, uh, I'm uh, founder of uh, Kapakir, a Norwegian-based uh, NGO. Uh, we have been working in Sierra Leone since 2010, uh, and um, we are collaborating with the Ministry of Health and, uh, and uh, Karolinska with, uh, with Johan's uh, group. And I also was um, uh, leader, one of the team leaders for the Norwegian uh, Ebola response. Uh, I came back from Sierra Leone uh, uh, four weeks ago. Uh, we, are, we, we are going to talk about uh, the, the, what happened to the other diseases, but then it's important to, to, happen, to know what happened to the healthcare workers also. So uh, uh, this is a little uh, tribute to two good friends and, and colleagues that we had in, uh, in our uh, uh, training program. Uh, very typical story. They they are both uh, healthcare workers, and uh, we were training them to do surgery. Uh, Joseph he he attended a, a patient in an emergency ward, uh, an uh, Ebola case. He, he thought four days later he uh, got fever himself and uh, and uh, died of uh, Ebola on the on the day that his child was uh, was one year. His father visited him and uh, he also got infected and he went home and he infected uh, uh, his sisters and the mother and they died. Uh, Samuel, he uh, did uh, cesarean sections in, uh, or, or uh, acute obstetric care in one of the main um, uh, maternity hospitals in, uh, in Freetown. And uh, he, he did a cesarean section on, uh, on, on a woman in, uh, with, with bleeding, and she was uh, tested negative. But she turned out to have Ebola anyway for some reason, and uh, he died uh, a few days later. Uh, he also, uh, before he, uh, he died, he went home to his family, so he infected his wife, his uh, children, uh, and both of them uh, died. So that's, that's the reality of, uh, of this uh, disease for our colleagues. Okay, uh, I, I think the first um, message is, is uh, well covered. Uh, I will talk about uh, Ebola's legacy on, on the healthcare system. And, uh, and our main finding uh, is that um, uh, decline in general admissions, all kinds of admissions, uh, by 70% from our finding, I will explain in a while, and uh, the decline in, in major surgery of, uh, of 50%. And I think the picture, you see there from uh, Kenema Governmental Hospital in eastern uh, Sierra Leone, completely empty. I think that is a good picture of uh, where we are today. The hospitals are empty. Uh, I skipped this one then. Uh, a little bit about uh, uh, Kappa Care because this is uh, the, the, the basis of, uh, of the, the study I will tell you about. So we have uh, been running a surgical training program since 2011 uh, together with the Ministry of Health and uh, NTNU uh, and uh, UNFPA. Um, in this program, we have a network of, uh, of 13 hospitals, governmental hospitals, NGO hospitals, and uh, our students, they took part in uh, 7,000 major surgeries in Sierra Leone in 2013, which is almost 30% of the national volume, meaning that those people are spread all over the, uh, the country and they are healthcare workers. Um, in 2013, we did a, a nationwide mapping where we visited all the hospitals uh, and the facilities in the country providing major surgery. We identified 60 and we were able to get data out of uh, 58. Um, and uh, when Ebola hit Sierra Leone in uh, June, we had uh, 26 clinical officers in uh, training. Uh, due to the death of uh, Joseph, we had to uh, temporarily close down, and uh, this became the, uh, the data collectors for the study I'm, uh, I'm, I'm showing now. And, uh, and uh, the second one that died, uh, Samuel, has collected uh, part of this, uh, this data. And um, <clears throat> I've been to the U.S., so I'm uh, I've learned that I need to do, uh, need to do some branding also. So uh, uh, Capocare was uh, portrayed in an editorial of Nature uh, ten days ago, which we are quite uh, proud of. <clears throat> um, uh, speaking about the importance of of reopening uh, uh, medical training programs. 
uh, part of this data uh, is uh, already published uh, in December, uh, but that was uh, data uh, until uh, November, and now I will talk about what happened uh, afterwards. So what kind of methods? Uh, we uh, gathered uh, weekly uh, inpatient admissions and surgery. We, uh, these uh, 21 uh, data collectors, they went uh, around to all uh, the hospitals and gathered this uh, data. From the, we, we started the data collection in September, so meaning that from September and uh, backwards to January, it was uh, retrospectively. And from uh, October and, uh, and until now, it's an ongoing uh, data collection. Um, we, uh, we, we started with 61 hospitals and uh, seven of them were excluded because they were either closed uh, or, uh, or they only performed cataract uh, surgery. We know that we are missing out a few hospitals. We are missing out uh, uh, two pediatric hospitals and, and one psychiatric hospital. Uh, but uh, out of that, I think this is um, covering the, uh, the, the, the total volume of hospitals in country governmental, non-governmental, and, uh, and faith-based institution. So we, we assessed then 55 uh, uh, healthcare facilities on a regular uh, basis. So the, 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 first, uh, uh, the first line here is uh, the start of the Ebola, uh, Ebola epidemic in Sierra Leone. Week 2022 20, was the first case. And this is when we started our data collection. And this is the hospitals. And the, the blue one are uh, where we have complete uh, data sets. The red one are those that are confirmed closed. And the yellow one, they, uh, they were closed when we visited them and they never opened, so we were not able to get data retrospectively from those uh, institutions. So they are, um, they are excluded. Uh, so this is uh, this is the uh, number of open uh, surgical uh, facilities, or more, or or, or uh, yeah, surgical facilities or equal hospitals. Um, uh, so we see a, a decline in the uh, number of open hospitals, but uh, the the real baseline uh, is uh, is actually here because we excluded uh, those that were uh, were closed at this uh, this point. This is the uh, this is the number of uh, weekly number of uh, admissions by uh, gender, uh, so, so weekly numbers uh, here and uh, and uh, the week uh, down here um, when Ebola came to Sierra Leone. So this is this data set is based on on more than seventy five thousand uh, admissions in uh, in uh, in Sierra Leone and uh, quite dramatic uh, decline in uh, in um, admissions. Uh, so this is uh, this is all the other uh, patients. This is uh, uh, malaria patients. This is uh, uh, those who are hospitalized for delivery. It's uh, it's not patients from uh, Ebola treatment centers. It's uh, uh, it's uh, uh, numbers from hospitals uh, uh, providing other care than uh, than Ebola. <coughs> So this is the median number uh, per uh, hospital, and uh, and if you uh, uh, the, the base if you use uh, before Ebola outbreak as the baseline, there is a 70% reduction uh, until the baseline uh, from uh, uh, October and and uh, and, and um, until uh, uh, until end of January, where we have that uh, up up till now. Uh, so who? Um, so this is the weekly uh, admissions by uh, age uh, group. And we can see that uh, uh, adults, primarily, over, over they had a very uh, the highest uh, decline, and uh, and also uh, also this uh, group, uh, which is uh, which is 12 to um, uh, to, to 15 uh, months, uh, but but there's been a huge decline in all uh, uh, all categories. Um, we were also wondering what happened uh, because the, 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 this is by uh, number of admissions uh, by region and uh, Ebola uh, hit Sierra Leone first in, in the eastern uh, region, in the, in, the in the border region towards uh, Guinea. Uh, so this is, uh, this is the green one. So we were, um, uh, we, we were wondering if, if they had an earlier or later decline in, uh, in number of admissions compared to, uh, to others. 
and uh, but it it, um, uh, it it doesn't seem so. But what we see here is that they have when they they haven't had that many cases since uh, October November, and and um, maybe there is an upward uh, trend. But uh, it seems like there is no geographical variation. It seems like uh, uh, sort of this uh, uh, this uh, nationwide rumors distrust uh, hit uh, the whole country at the same time. This is uh, uh, this is um, the number of deliveries uh, in in hospitals. This is not all the deliveries in Sierra Leone. It's hospital deliveries, and the total number of operations. And here is breakdown by uh, by uh, cesarean sections and by hernia repairs. And I think what is uh, uh, hernia repair is an, is a more um, is, a, is a more planned procedure. Uh, which dropped uh, uh, a lot more than cesarean section. That, that seems uh, that seems natural, and I think also that the, the use of uh, the, the the ratio between uh, number of deliveries and cesarean section uh, became a lot less after the Ebola outbreak. Meaning that that, that can be an indication that. Uh, um, uh, uh, pregnant uh, or it deliveries uh, stronger selection of of, uh, of of severity at uh, deliveries after the Ebola uh, outbreak. So this is also this is based on uh, on 16,000 surgeries and and 5,000 cesarean uh, sections. Um, so. The uh, the r reasons for this, I think it's, uh, Yuan was talking a little bit about the setting, but I think it's also important to know the setting. You can imagine yourself as either a patient or a, or a healthcare worker, and uh, the case, Ebola case definitions, as, as they were in August, for suspected cases, uh, sudden onset of high fever, and more than three of those symptoms, uh, headache, anorexia, lethargy, uh, muscle aching, uh, those Everybody of us have those symptoms uh, monthly, more or less, and uh, th this is this is the, but it describes the, dif the difficulties uh, the the healthcare workers uh, face because uh, more or less every single patient coming to uh, to an uh, uh, emergency ward is a, is a possible uh, Ebola case. And uh, and uh, this was uh, from the Lancet uh, in uh, in December. The incidence of Ebola infection in healthcare workers was is a hundred times higher than uh, non healthcare workers. Um, and in uh, Kenema governmental hospitals, uh, they uh, wrote that uh, more than or 65 healthcare workers was infected only in this uh, hospital. Uh, and this is the triage area uh, in uh, in August before they uh, and it it doesn't look at all uh, what it's uh, what, what the facilities were able to put up uh, now. So um, uh, of course it's uh, understandable that healthcare workers are reluctant also to uh, they, they have to be careful. I think um, uh, so. The healthcare worker perspectives. Uh, you have to find new uh, uh, solution of of uh, meeting your patient. This seems like a joke, uh, but I think it's uh, it's uh, <laughs> it's it, it's not. Um, uh, for uh, as as a healthcare worker, or doctor, uh, our the mantra, at least in emergency medicine, is ABC: uh, airway, breathing, circulation. In Sierra Leone now, it's avoid body contact. That's ABC for uh, healthcare workers. That's above uh, the airway um, breathing. So I think this is this is the. Uh, of course, we recognize this, but uh, I, I think it's also in in the recovery phase that we are entering into now. To uh, um, uh, and, and with a few cases popping up around here and there, uh, that we we need to find new solution to uh, provide safety for uh, healthcare workers in in ordinary uh, hospitals. This will be a tremendous challenge in the in in, in the coming uh, year. And uh, uh, from the patient perspective, I think we have uh, uh, we, we talked about Ebola management center, Ebola treatment centers. Uh, I also heard uh, uh, all the, on all this abbreviation. I also heard this uh, EAC uh, Ebola amplifier center, which is the name of a which was a general name for a, a hospital or an uh, or an ambulance. 
Um, so this slide, uh, th this is this is a big board. This picture I, I took it uh, uh, when I was uh, just before leaving Freetown, and uh, these these boards are all over the town. So there is, I think it's two things. Uh, something that may, that the ministry maybe not pays attention to the details, uh, not being able able to spell uh, ambulance correct on 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 a huge national campaign. Uh, the other thing is that that you have to go out and 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 tell again and again and again and again that uh, that ambulances are uh, are clean, safe, and uh, and re ready for use, because that's not uh, uh, that that's not what people uh, think they are. Uh, the same with uh, with hospitals. So I, so to be, to rebuild this trust um, will be uh, that that's will be a con considerable uh, challenge. And those two uh, together, the the patients' fear of or, or the healthcare workers' fear of. Of, of treating patients and, and, and patients' reluctance to come to a center is the, is the reasons, or at least part of the, the reasons why we have such a dramatic decline in, uh, in, uh, in admissions as we, as we have seen uh, here. I liked it, that one also. Uh, in, uh, it was also a uh, photography from, uh, from Freetown. Uh, yeah. uh, yes, that was what I wanted to, uh, to say. Thank you. <laughs> So any questions? Hi, that was great, thank you. Um, I was interested in the um, graph where you showed the rates of deliveries and cesarean sections. And cesarean sections were stable for reasons you articulated, but the deliveries had gone down. Was that hospital deliveries, and does that not just mean that women are delivering at home? It was hospital deliveries. Yeah, so yeah. so presumably the deliveries at home are yeah. going up because yeah. people are staying away from the hospitals. And and will there be able to be any follow-on data on, uh, you know, associated risks with those deliveries that might otherwise have happened in hospital? If you see what I mean. It's uh, uh, we we tried to we we ca we made a calculation on uh, on the admissions. Um, uh, if we uh, if if the baseline from January to May. Uh, was sort of the, the 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 average over the whole year. Uh, then uh, we calculated that uh, this means uh, 35,000 uh, hospitalizations less uh, during 2014 alone. Uh, yeah, uh, so th th that's high number. Uh, when we calculate cesarean, uh, um, uh, yeah, on on cesarean, it's it's it's, it's harder to say. Yeah, the, um, what 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 it means? But thirty-five thousand, I think, in al already before uh, Ebola outbreak, the average number of hospitalizations per hundred thousand inhabitants was uh, was uh, sixty to seventy times lower than the OECD uh, average, and and now with uh, a seventy percent reduction on top of that again, it's very dramatic. But uh, but how how that reflects in mortality and morbidity, nobody knows. Yeah. Thank you for the presentation. Could, could you give us some information on what happened to immunization coverage for under fives or under twos, please? I don't know. <laughs> but uh, they, uh, uh, not, not, I have no database information, but of, uh, what we know that uh, many of the, of, of the programs have stopped, so more or less. Uh, but uh, I think it was released something on measles a few days ago, uh, but I, uh, it's only from what I've been reading. Yeah. Thank, you. Thank you very much. My name is Jeanette Magnus. I'm from the University of Oslo. Your colleague said that you would answer some of the questions that were raised when <laughs> when he was talking. And uh, even though you have covered some of them, there's still this whole thing about the extent of deaths than in the homes that is not related to Ebola but to other issues yeah. because of the <coughs> low uh, opportunity to visit facilities and so on. And that might not be for you, but for your colleague. So are there any plans for WHO or others to go out and just start seeing what are the death tolls in the in the districts after this that cannot be related to Ebola? 
um, yeah, so there's a third branding point. Uh, we, we have we have um, uh, we we have delivered an, an application to Globac on uh, following uh, on, on doing a community-based uh, uh, surveillance, and and we need that part is a retrospective uh, mortality uh, uh, survey. Uh, so we hope hope to f to find out uh, that. Yeah, yeah. Last question. Sonia Meara from the Norwegian Institute of Public Health. Yeah, um, I was uh, struck by the slide that you uh, that lists the uh, symptoms, and I was wondering if there's any strategies that can be used so that every uh, that people coming into the health center that uh, don't have Ebola but get put into an Ebola uh, waiting area. So I'm wondering that if there's been uh, discussions about that also as being a big problem, so that there's, of course, what she was just mentioning, that there are people who are not seeking care, but those that do seek care may be suspected of Ebola when they don't, in fact, maybe they have malaria from a fever and then they are. Uh, so I was wondering how that can be addressed and if there were strategies that have been discussed. Yeah, I, I don't know if that answers your question, but... Um uh, from my from my work in Sierra Leone now in in the Ebola uh, we call it we call it a treatment center because we believe that uh, fluid I, uh, aggressive fluid is treatment. Um, uh, we uh, our approach in the in in the treatment center uh, we we saw we saw it as um, any patients that came uh, th when there was raised and uh, and um, suspicion. We so that then it's our uh, role to uh, to prove that it's negative, meaning that we we admitted everyone, and we uh, tested uh, um, everyone. So we we did not release anyone before we had uh, an, an, a negative. Um, uh, but but of course the the it's no, the the resources you need to do uh, such a thing is is uh, is you you cannot believe uh, it, it's it's not possible. Uh, so so then of course rapid uh, tests are uh, are crucial and uh, and and we will not um, uh, and and vaccines of course it's uh, I think do those two things. Uh, in the meanwhile now b before we have we are looking into possibilities how can we uh, how can we safely uh, uh, work in hospitals now uh, dealing with ordinary uh, cases um, and. Um, uh, th that that is a very very hard uh, hard thing. So so strict triage monitoring. I think we have to we will have to do a lot of things in full PPE. Um, even other deliveries. I think we need to do them in uh, in, in in those. Um, yeah, not maybe 100 percent, but and and again, that's uh, we we can do that for a short time if there is a lot of funding uh, along with it because treating one patient will be extremely uh, uh, costly and and they they do this in the governmental hospitals also they they do surgery for example they conduct deliveries in in uh, in, in full pp uh, in, in many places but it's in, in massively resource demanding hmm. great thank you very much indeed hmm. thank you.